Hi, uh, my name is Kasper Osterholt, and uh, I'm here presenting joint work with my PhD advisor, Vince Kornitzer, on decision scoring rules. So here's the setup that we're considering in this paper. We imagine that there's some agent, um, whom we'll call the principal, and in this case, Alice, and she wants to make some decision. So for example, she wants to choose a strategy, a business strategy for her startup. And there's some external expert here, Bob, and he knows a lot about uh, the kind of decision that Alice has to make, but he doesn't care very much about Alice intrinsically, um, and he mainly cares about making money. So Alice wants to make the best decision given what Bob knows, but she has to create some monetary incentive to get Bob to tell her what option is best or what action is best for her. So here's the setup uh, a bit more formally. Imagine that there's some set of actions, at least two uh, actions from which the principal can choose. There's a set of at least two outcomes and the principal has some utility function over outcomes and wants to maximize the expectation of this utility function. The expert has for each action available to the principal, a probabilistic belief um, that is a probabilistic, uh, a probability function over outcomes um, that describes what outcomes uh, that action may give rise to if taken by the principal. And now the principal uses the following type of mechanism to incentivize the expert to reveal his information. So first, the expert submits a recommendation. So that's one of the actions available to the principal and a probability distribution over outcomes. Then the principal always takes the, um, the action recommended by the expert and observes some outcome. And finally, the principal pays the expert according to some function. And this function is what we'll call a decision scoring rule. And it maps this probabilistic report and the outcome eventually obtained onto some real number. And we imagine that the, the expert wants to uh, make a report that maximizes his expected score. And this, um, this setup is inspired by the literature on proper scoring rules for eliciting predictions. Um, so here's some, some papers So it started in the 50s uh, work, work on this topic starts in the, in the 50s um, and uh, has been uh, investigated um, by, by a variety of authors. And um, um, the, the last, uh, the 2007 paper is um, more of an overview paper on this topic. And there also have been some papers that study more or less the setup that, uh, that we describe here with, with decision making. These are the two most significant papers on this topic. Um, and they have some, some twist and some, some alternative things that they consider. So for example, Janet, I'll consider um, the setting where an alternative setting where the principal can not only take the expert's recommendation, but can also choose other actions with some small probability. Uh, but we imagine that the principal always follows uh, the expert's recommendation. So now we define the kinds of sp scoring rules that we what, that we like. So um, those are uh, what we will call proper decision scoring rules. And we can also we could also say that these are scoring rules that make this entire mechanism truthful. So informally, what uh, what it means for a decision scoring rule to be proper is just that uh, if a, if a um, proper decision scoring rule is used then to maximize his expected score, the experts can simply report honestly, where an honest report consists of a recommendation that is, um, that is actually best for the principal and his true belief over what outcome might arise if that, uh, if that recommendation were followed by the principal. So more formally, we look at this argmax. So we imagine that the, that the principal, uh, sorry, that the expert maximizes his expected score. 
So this is the score that the expert uh, receives if he he um, uh, makes a probabilistic report p hat a hat and the outcome o is obtained. And if the expert makes, in addition to this probabilistic report, recommends some action a hat, then his expected score is this expectation where the outcome is sampled um, or is distributed according to p a hat. So the true distribution for the action that the principal, uh, that the expert recommends. And of all of all the uh, possible reports, the expert uh, will choose one that maximizes this expected score. We assume that that's simply what the expert does. And um, for a decision scoring rule to be proper, that just means that one of the expected score maximizing reports is an honest one. So again, one that consists of an optimal action for the principle and the accurate probabilistic uh, belief about, um, about what distribution that action gives rise to. Now, you might notice that this definition is satisfied even by the constant scoring rule, for example. So the one that always gives the expert $10 um, because there all reports are in this argmax. Um, so we might be even more interested in versions of propriety that in addition have some strictness component. So that would mean that <clears throat> um, you would not only say that uh, you not you not only require that uh, an honest report is among the optimal ones, but also that, for example, all all uh, all optimal reports from the uh, experts' perspective consist of an honest recommendation and an honest prediction. And we can also uh, define partially uh, partially uh, strict versions of propriety. So that would mean that. Um, in this argmax are, for example, some. Um, so, we, so if we could, for example, we could we could require that a scoring rule is strictly proper with regard to the recommendation. That would mean that um, that in this argmax uh, are only uh, reports that consist of an uh, that have an honest recommendation, but the prediction might be off, for example. Now let's give an example of a very simple proper decision scoring rule. So Alice could just go to Bob and say, I'll give you 3% of my startup. So I'll give you some amount of shares in my startup, in other words. Then once Bob has these shares, Bob wants to maximize the expected value of those shares. And to do so, he will simply give Alice his honest recommendation about what she should, should do. Because then if Alice follows that recommendation, that's the way that Bob maximizes the value of his shares. But Bob, of course, doesn't have any incentive to tell Alice anything else. Alice might nevertheless ask for anything uh, for something else, but Bob has no incentive to, to actually uh, give a probabilistic distribution over what will happen if, uh, if the recommended business strategy were uh, implemented. So let's translate this into our, in, into our formal setup. So here we have a scoring rule, and it is simply defined by taking the utility of the outcome that is obtained and then applying, uh, multiplying it by some positive constant and adding some other constant. So for example, uh, in, in this Alice and Bob case, the utility is just the value of the startup or the profit of the startup or something like that in in this outcome omega. And um, C1 was uh, 3% and C2 was 0. So this decision scoring rule is proper. And it's also strictly proper with regard to the recommendation. So that means uh, that if given this, uh, if, if being scored by this decision scoring rule, the expert will always give a recommendation that maximizes the principal's expected utility. And that's because to maximize this term, the expert has to maximize this utility, um, which exactly corresponds to giving an honest recommendation. 
but it's not strictly proper with regard to anything else. So you can see that this scoring rule, like this right-hand uh, side, doesn't depend on the reported probability distribution. And that means that, um, of course, the, the, the expert might simply uh, give the honest probabilistic report, but he has no particular reason, to, uh, like no monetary incentive to do so. You can also use this example to illustrate another point. So you can see that this property, these or these properties, like whether it's proper and that it's strictly proper with regard to the rec recommendation and so on, don't depend on the size of C1. But of course, in practice, um, it, it will oft there, there might often be reasons to not to, to choose a particular C1. So for example, if you use very small values of C1, so like 0 0.001, then the expert still maximizes their expected utility by giving an honest report or an honest recommendation in particular, but um, but they um, the the value in doing so is very small for the expert. So if the expert has to pay some cost for making a report or for compiling a, a useful report or for acquiring information or thinking about what's best for the principal, then uh, he might not bother to do so if C1 is very small. Similarly, if C1 is very large, so for example, if if Alice were to give Bob 99% of her startup, then Bob might give very good recommendations, but of course, Alice loses most of her value um, just by giving away most of the startup. So arguably, one, one, one can think about questions such as which C1 is better than, like which value of C1 is best and so on. But we don't, in this paper, we don't consider this question. We're only interested in characterizing what scoring rules there are and not, or like what proper decision scoring rules there are, rather, um, and not really in identifying the best uh, decision scoring rules under some, uh, some constraints. Um, and in that sense, the problem that we're considering is not a true principal expert problem because we don't look at these kind of trade-offs between costs of making reports and and so on. We do have another paper that does explicitly consider such trade-offs, however, and it's also uh, we also present this in this conference and it's titled Minimum Regret Contracts for Principal Expert Problems. So if you're interested in this, um, feel free to watch that presentation as well. Okay, so we have one uh, type of decision scoring rule, these very simple linear decision scoring rules. What other kinds of decision scoring rules or proper decision scoring rules are there? And in particular, are there ones where Alice can get Bob to reveal some additional information, in particular to also reveal some, uh, to make some predictions about, uh, about the outcome that occurs if Alice follows uh, the recommendation. And indeed, there are such decision scoring rules. And we'll here give an example of such a rule, which is able to elicit estimates of the expected utility that, um, that the principal op um, obtains by following the recommendation. And we'll t it will turn out that um, that's basically all that the principal can find out. And it will also turn out that this type, like the type of scoring rule that I explain on this slide is representative of all um, proper decision scoring rules in some sense. Okay, but let's, um, let's look at this step by step. So first imagine that the principal has some positive real number mu, and all she wants to find out is whether her expected utility is greater or smaller than mu. Then what she can do is the following. She can ask the expert, um, uh, she, she can offer to the expert um, to buy a share in the project. So a share um, pays off $1, of, uh, $1 per unit of utility uh, obtained by the principal. And she offers this share for a price of mu dollars. And the idea is that if if the, um, if the expert believes the expected utility of the principal to be greater than mu, then the share is also worth more than mu dollars, 
And so in that case, the expert will buy the share. Whereas if the experts expect uh, the experts belief about the principles expected utility is like great is uh, smaller than mu, then she will reject that offer. And if um, if the expert believes that um, the the principles expected utility is exactly mu, then he will be indifferent uh, between accepting or rejecting the offer. So by making this offer, the um, the principal can find out whether the expert believes the expected utility to be greater or smaller than, than mu. And what's also important is that like this, uh, making this offer doesn't mess with the expert's incentives to make an honest recommendation. So we, for example, imagine that before this happens, the principal gives the experts ten, the expert 10 shares in her project, then and then makes this offer. And then after this offer is made, the expert will even either have 11 or 10 shares, but in either case, the expert will want the experts, uh, the principal's project to do as best as possible. And so we'll make an honest recommendation. So now we can make more, get more fine grained information um, about the expected utility by offering these shares at different prices. So for example, the principal might go to the expert and offer this share at uh, one cent, uh, two cents, uh, three cents, and so on, until the principal at some point, uh, the expert at some point stops accepting these offers. So for example, if the expert stops accepting these offers um, at a price of um, $5.48, but at $5.47, he still accepted uh, the offer, then the principal knows that the uh, that her expected utility is between five point. 47 and 5.48. Now we want to translate this back into our formal uh, setup. So we want to have some function which we can apply to a prediction and so on. Um, and for that, the first thing to notice is that uh, the expert only needs to give the highest price at which they're willing to accept, uh, accept these, these offers. And this is this highest price is essentially an estimate of the expected utility that um, that the expert thinks the principal will obtain. Um, and then, as a, se a second step, we can imagine that these um, these uh, steps, this the step size um, between these prices becomes infinitesimal, and also that the um, the, the prices themselves and the, the payoffs um, become infinitesimal. And then we can rewrite this like this, like we can express this as a decision scoring rule as follows. So we have this function s, but we abuse notation a bit. And instead of applying s to a probability distribution, we apply it only to a reported expected utility, because that's the only thing that matters for this uh, for this type of decision scoring rule. And then it is also applied um, to the utility that is obtained in the end by the um, by the principle rather than the outcome itself. And now we get this term. So mu hat will interpret mu hat as the maximum price at which the um, principle is uh, at which the expert is still willing to buy these shares. And then this integral becomes an integral over shares. And um, this minus x is the price that the, um, that the expert pays for the share. And this y is just the payoff that you get for each share that you have. So this integral expresses a sort of um, continuous version of this uh, of this entire scheme of offering shares at different prices. And we can calculate that integral and get this formula. This formula um, would usually be considered simpler, but I think uh, it is much clearer from this integral how this scheme works and why it works. Okay, we've made some good progress. We now have decision scoring rules that get the expert to report an expected utility along with a recommendation. 
can we get anything else? Can can Alice also find out the variance over her, uh, the variance of the utility that she obtains if she follows Bob's advice, or perhaps an entire distribution over outcomes, or the probability that her utility will be at least one million, or something like that. And again, the answer to that is turns out to be no. And on this slide, I will uh, give some intuition for what the problem very roughly is. So if you're familiar with the literature on proper scoring rules for prediction, you will sort of immediately think about Breyer's quadratic scoring rules and, and, and these kinds of the logarithmic scoring rule and think like, how can we kind of use them uh, to, to also uh, to, to elicit predictions along with like entire probability distributions along with uh, a recommendation. But unfortunately, these have the general problem that they incentivize the expert to recommend an action that makes the outcome easier to predict, even if it makes the outcome slightly worse in expectation, slightly worse for the principle that is. So here's an example. Um, so let's take the Breyer scoring rule. And the Breyer scoring rule has this specific, or well, not very specific, but this property that if you, um, if you predict if your prediction is truthful and you predict that um, ten different outcomes might occur with equal probability, then uh, then your expected Breyer score is one over ten. And if you pred um, predict that three outcomes will occur with equal probability, then your expected Breyer score is one over three. So that means basically that you get higher expected Breyer scores if you um, if you make predictions about variables that are like random variables that are easier to predict. So if the weather tomorrow is easy to predict and you make a prediction about it, you, you get a higher Breyer score in expectation than if the weather tomorrow is harder to predict. Usually that's not a problem um, in the, the standard applications of Breyer scoring rule. But uh, because usually you cannot choose which random variable you're, uh, you're predicting. But in our setting, uh, that is different. In our setting, the expert chooses which random variable they're predicting because they're choosing which action the principal takes and therefore choosing what, um, what random variable they're being scored on, essentially. And for that reason, if we use a scoring rule like th this one, where we score, we give some score for the utility. So that's just this linear scoring rule that we considered earlier. And then we add some term that, um, that uses the Breyer scoring rule. Then the problem is that the expert might rec recommend an action where this first term is slightly lower, but um, the, the distribution of our outcomes has like it's, 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 it's very simple. So, for example, if there's one outcome, uh, one action that um, leads to one outcome with probability one, then they'll um, have some incentive to recommend that action so that this Breyer score is high in expectation. And so, if if the differences in utility are small enough, they'll pre they'll prefer to recommend the action that gives uh, that makes the outcome easier to predict. So that's roughly why it doesn't work. And um, can also prove that formally. I don't give the proof here, but I'll state uh, I'll state the result. So in SB, any proper decision scoring rule. And then uh, let there be two distributions, PA and hat PA. And PA is the honest distribution for A, and A is some action that the um, that the expert has settled on recommending. And um, p hat a is some dis potentially dishonest distribution about, um, about what will happen if that action were taken. And now we make some restrictions on how this dishonest distribution, um, what this dishonest distribution looks like. So the first restriction is that, is that it has to have the same expected utility as the true distribution. And we also require that both of these are not extreme reports. So neither of them predicts that 
and the expert or uh, the principal always gets the worst possible or the best possible utility. And we require that the report never rules out an outcome that is in fact possible. So now we have this true distribution and this different distribution, which shares some property or properties with the true distribution, but which can be pretty different. And from this, we can infer, or it follows, or it must be the case for S to be struck um, proper, that the expected score of reporting PA is the same as ex the expected um, uh, the expected score of uh, reporting P hat A. And so this basically this this means that we cannot uh, or this this is a formal statement um, with the unnecessary ca caveats um, of the statement that um, a proper decision scoring rule cannot set strict incentives on anything but the expected utility of the um, probabilistic report. And for that reason, um, it is enough to imagine that the expert just submits a recommendation and an estimate of uh, expected utility, uh, essentially. And it can also be shown that um, uh, it is enough for the score to rep um, depend only on the utility obtained rather than the outcome itself. And so for that reason, we can adopt this notation that we already used earlier, where the score depends, um, it, where the score is a function of, um, of the reported expected utility and the utility obtained rather than a distribution and an outcome. Okay, and now we come to the uh, to the main result of our paper, which is a characterization of proper decision scoring rules. And so basically this just says that a decision scoring rule is proper if and only if it has this particular form. And this form isn't very complex, as you can see, it's, like, um, uh, it's, it's um, stated in, for, in, in terms of um, basic real analysis, but still, uh, I think the um, it's it's more interesting to look at the interpretation of this um, of of this uh, e um, equation, and um, it turns out that this can be rewritten in some ways, such that you can reinterpret this characterization as follows: all proper decision scoring rules can be interpreted as selling shares in the principal's project at different prices. So that basically means that. This kind of example mechanism, where the principal offers um, first share a share at a price of uh, one cent and two cent and a three cent, like this type of mechanism, is representative of all um, of all decision scoring rules of all proper decision scoring rules, and that is um, that is um, the one sort of key takeaway from this paper. Uh, thank you for. Uh, for watching this presentation.